On Saturday evening, May 10th, 2008, 32-year-old Neil Ahern left his AA meeting early to go find a party. I'm not gonna quit drinking because I love drinking. I love drinking. And I thought, well, I'm gonna drink. There were no witnesses to the crash, but at the scene, local fire and rescue found Neil lying on the pavement with massive head injuries. He was taken to the local hospital to be flown to Vidant Medical Center in Greenville, North Carolina. His parents, Diane and Mike, got there just in time to see their son. I grabbed his hand and I told him, I said, Neil, you have been stubborn your whole life. Don't give up now. Don't give up. Neil had been suffering with anxiety and depression since he was a teenager. He used alcohol, marijuana, and eventually crack to ease his mind. For me, I could get a little relief from my anxiety, from my worrying, my compulsive worrying. Diane believed God was the only one who could help. I would go to bed praying at night. You got to do something because I can't do it and I know he's killing himself. As Neil got older, he functioned well enough to hold down a job, get married and have a daughter. The added stress of a family heightened his anxieties. His addictions got worse, eventually costing him his marriage and custody of his daughter. I tell you, I would pray. And I would say, Lord, you know, I can't handle this. I'm going to turn it over to you. It turns out that Neil was also asking God for help. So I prayed the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And, I, and I, I would pray that prayer and ask the Lord, please help me. I, I'm living. This is, this is hell on earth. Then in April 2008, Diane was watching the 700 Club during CBN's week of prayer. She had been giving to the ministry for several years. They sent me an email telling me, if there's anybody that you want us to pray for, we will. And so I put in, you know, pray for my son, Neil, and uh, he has an addiction problems. The next day, Diane received a reply from CBN with a prayer. I bind the evils that are trying to control my son, Neil, here on earth, and I claim the victory through Jesus Christ in heaven. Sometime later, Neil asked his mother a question. He said, are you praying for me, Mom? And I said, I am all the time, every day. And he said, don't stop. But he said, I feel it. I know somebody was praying for me. Two weeks later, Neil was in a hospital with a crushed skull. A life flight to nearby Vidant Medical Center, his only chance of survival. Diane spoke to the pilot before they left. He said, you know, if you want to say goodbye to him, we're gonna let you. First thing popped into my head is they don't expect him to live. The doctors at Vidant explained that Neil had massive brain trauma and would probably be in a coma the rest of his life. Even if he came out of it, his mental capabilities would be extremely limited. As Diane prayed over the next week, she felt God telling her something different. And I'm crying and I'm reading the Bible and praying. And I heard a voice says, don't worry, I've got him. And it was so vivid that I actually looked around to see if somebody said it, but there's nobody there. Then 16 days after the accident, Neil suddenly woke up. And I remember looking at my arm and thinking, I don't know what happened, but whatever it was, was bad. And I remember thinking at the time, thank God I'm here. It was so miraculous because they've already told me that your best that you can hope for is long-term care. I thought, here he's got a second chance. He's got a second chance to get it right. 
it soon became clear that Neil would be okay. I've been laying in bed for a while in the hospital here, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna make good use of this time. I'm gonna get up and read my Bible. Something else happened in Neil's two months stay at the hospital. He rededicated his life to Jesus Christ. There ain't but one that would have known that this was what it would take to turn my life around. I've learned he's my Lord and Savior, and he's a, uh, and I felt him. I felt that peace that surpasses all understanding. I never want to lose that. And not only that, Neil says God freed him from his addictions to drugs and alcohol. I truly believe with all my heart that God took that desire away from me. Since then, Neil has shown no signs of brain damage. Diane believes it was prayer, God's love, and grace that made her son a new man. Pray about everything and worry about nothing. And, uh, and that's became my motto, no matter what. <laughs>